Hey guys, so we're here today uh, looking at the industrial chiller I have hooked up to my computer. And uh, as you might imagine, it does a pretty good job of cooling the computer down. So before we look at any numbers on the computer, let's have a look at the chiller and see how it works. Okay, so this is my industrial rack mount chiller. It's rated to remove 4000 BTU or 1200 watts of heat. So here are the various parts of the chiller. In the front we've got the compressor coil, then we have the compressor, and then we have the water to refrigerant heat exchanger, we've got a reservoir, and we've got our circulation pump. The circulation pump is a one-third horsepower rotary vane pump that flows at 1.8 gallons per minute up to 80 psi depending on how restricting the lines are. And then down here we have a uh, solenoid valve. What the solenoid valve does is it opens up periodically to allow refrigerant to flow past the water to refrigerant heat exchanger and straight back into the compressor. That means that it's not doing any cooling during that time and allows for the temperature to be regulated via the PID controller on the front. Okay, so here's the PID control on the front. Nothing terribly special about it. You can you know, change the set point. That's about it. Okay, so right now I've got a pretty conservative overclock on this. Uh, 4.6 gigahertz, uh, 1.299 volts, but you can see it's at 1.3. Uh, let's see what the temperatures do when I run Prime 95. Okay, so Prime 95 is running right now, and as you can see, CPU is staying pretty darn cool. I mean, these temperatures are, are actually cooler than what I've been running just idle with my uh, regular loop. Okay, so it's a few minutes later, and you can see we haven't locked up yet. The uh, loop temperature is maintaining a steady 11 degrees Celsius, which means our delta V is really not that bad given these current temperatures. Um, I attribute that to the high flow rate that comes from this rotary vane pump, which will maintain a constant 1.8 gallons per minute. Okay, so 4.6 is nice and all, but uh, yeah, a lot of people can do that. So let's go for something a little bit more aggressive. Uh, okay, and uh, I'm not going to go through all these settings, but uh, I can scroll through them, and if you're interested in any of them, you can pause the video and look at them. Um, the CPU features uh, on this particular board. I find that you want to set, basically just disable this power limit, both of these, and the current limit. I mean, you're never going to get to 1,024 amps or <laughs> 4 kilowatts. So, yeah, those settings essentially just disable it. So, it's not going to be cutting in on your phone. Um, let's see, I'm not really doing anything with the memory timing right now. I'm just trying to get the CPU up. Uh, and probably do more on the ring ratio. Okay. And let's see if it boots. Oh, we didn't lock up on the logo. Well, that's a good sign. Nice. Okay, so here we are at 5 gigahertz. Uh, not crashing yet. Uh, I pushed it right up to 1.4 volts. Haven't really gone over that yet. 
Uh, I might try that if uh, Cinebench crashes out. <coughs> okay, let's see if we can survive uh, Cinebench. N no, no, we, we can't. <laughs> okay, so I put my ring ratio back to 35, and I'm pushing the core voltage up to 1.425. Uh, we'll see if this works. All right, well, let's see if Cinebench runs with a little bit more voltage. My guess is probably not. Oh, and I'm correct. Okay, so I think I'm going to take down the CPU ratio to, uh, you know, let's go with 4.8 gigahertz. Okay, will it run at 4.8? Yeah, looks like it's going. Okay, well, that was pretty neat. Okay, obviously the uh, reference ratings that come with Cinebench must be pretty old, but there we go. Uh, was that a 14, 16? So I don't know how good or bad that is, but that's what I get uh, overclocked at 4.8 gigahertz. So here are the results I get when I run it at 4.9 gigahertz. Not a massive improvement, but at least it didn't crash. Okay, so here are the temperatures when I run uh, Cinebench. And you can see nothing really to write home about. What's the max there? 42, which is <laughs> cooler than a lot of people idle. So when I was running that and looking at the temperatures, uh, I actually got at 1445, which is a little better than the last number. Well, that's all the time I got for goofing around tonight, but uh, before I end the video, let's have a look at how everything's all plumbed up so that we can see that there's no uh, trickery going on here. So we got the CPU water block here. It's a Coolant uh, 400i. Uh, the, uh, the the towel is there because this pump runs such a high pressure that it'll actually make these um, tubes, the joints up there, weep a little bit. And yeah, I don't want my my 1070 taking a bath. And uh, there we've got what's my n normal loop now. Uh, that's a PMP 450S, the 24 volt. D5, and then I've got these fans, which I'm probably going to replace. Uh, these are some Delta fans. I forget the exact part number, but they're uh, 250 CFM fans, and yeah, they definitely sound like it when they're running at full blast. So I've got this chiller running off an extension cord that's running to my living room so that I can have it operating on a different breaker. Because if I operate the chiller and my computer on the same breaker, it'll pop. 